Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, fellow environmentalists, mindset changers. We are back with the Tambulukanis, Anthony and Dixon at Tambu Farms. And for this particular segment, which is part two, we would like to talk about the major environmental problem that they're experiencing in this particular area. So, gentlemen, straight off the bat, what, what are the major challenges you, you're facing here and the community in general, the other farmers? What are the problems they're facing? All right. Um, so, as we all know, uh, as a culture, for it to, uh, to work, we need uh, land. All right. So, uh, land is one of the basic needs yeah. for in agriculture. You need enough space, you need enough land to, to, to do your work. So, uh, in order for that to happen, we find uh, we need to clear up a lot of uh, trees for you to set up uh, your, your farming activities. Yeah, so um, now with that uh, comes a lot of uh, environmental challenges. Yeah, because uh, as we all know, uh, one of our major lifelines as uh, the human being because uh, they provide us with uh, a lot of uh, necessities for us to live a very comfortable life as human beings here on earth. Yes, yeah, so um, when we cut down trees uh, without uh, actually thinking of the repercussions, you find uh, uh, a lot of environmental challenges come to set in and come to bite us as uh, the same farmers who want to, you know, uh, gain from 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 the land is clear. Yeah. So uh, one of uh, the challenges is that we have experienced, especially in this part of uh, uh, Chongwe, is the um, uh, erratic. maybe like six, six years ago uh, when you would come or when you come in the rain season how the rain pattern would be is different from how it is today uh, back then it was a bit more predictable um, would, you know that if it gets to like 24th October like it will rain somewhere around that time and by November it would have like kicked off and to December, January and then like March, April it goes down but now it's a bit difficult to reach Open patches. Yeah, That's yeah. from people cutting down trees, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, what do you think the solution to this problem is? What What should be done to help with the problem? Okay. So, I think the the biggest problem is an economic problem. Uh, people uh, burn charcoal to to earn a living. Yeah, to, for for livelihood purposes. 
and so I think if we think around ways to uh, bring economic activity, more economic activity to areas like this, uh, that that would help because it would mainly be people cutting down trees or using charcoal or firewood for subsistence use, uh, which will help the problem. But since it's a commercial purpose, it's commercialized, that's what makes it um, rampant. So I guess the, the economic side of things, because other than uh, charcoal burning and maybe a little bit of farming, which is difficult because of the rain pattern, there is not much that people can do uh, here, or that, or there is, but not much that they know to do. Yeah. So that knowledge is yeah. now needed. Yeah. 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 So the, the majority of the farmers in the area have actually turned into charcoal burners. Yeah. Exactly. Because farming is no longer profitable. Yeah. Exactly. Do both farm by day and charcoal, charcoal burning by night. night. Yes. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. yeah. Any other pointers you would like to bring out, Dixon? Um, I think the the knowledge gap mm. uh, it has to be really narrowed, especially with uh, the locals here, to actually understand that uh, there are actually other ways uh, we can make money, even from the very environment. Uh, because uh, if we preserve our trees, we could, uh, for example, <coughs> um, uh, <coughs> farm uh, or harvest uh, honey from bees and, and stuff like that, uh, and we don't have to disturb the environment. But uh, what is really lacking is that uh, knowledge of the know-how. I don't know um, from the Ministry of Agriculture and uh, the Extension Officers. Uh, how they can help in that regard to actually help farmers learn the sustainable way also of uh, doing agriculture without doing so much uh, disturbance to the to the environment. Yes. Thank you so much for for those um, pointers in relation to the problems being faced here and and the possible solutions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, like like you not. Uh, this problem is not only affecting Chungwe district. I think yeah. each of the major districts has a charcoal burning problem. So it's it's not a Chongwe district, Lusaka district, Mumwa district problem. It's it's actually a national issue. So we collectively really need to find ways of empowering our citizens so that the practices that are not sustainable are let go of and people take on money raising ventures that are more compatible with taking care of the environment so that's something we really need to to look into any final words you would like to, to put out there uh, i think uh first of all i uh, thank you so much for uh, coming through we are, we are so honored to have uh, you today visit us uh, in our bushes um, and I think this, this topic, I believe, is a very important one because I believe we touched on two major themes today, which is uh, the agricultural part and connecting with the young people and the environment as well. And I think for the general agricultural sector in Zambia, I think these two are the, the important pillars, or one of the important pillars, because the more we encourage young people to do it, uh, without touching the environmental part, it's like we'll be uh, pushing the problem forward. We'll have a lot of young people with so much energy and cutting down trees because I think the perception of farming that we have currently is, uh, or most people have, is the, can I call it the commercial way where you cut down everything and have yeah. like plain fields. That's where you do it from. We see it from the big farmers who have center pivots because the center pivot has, has to rotate the soil out of the uh, land but I think uh, with such talks uh, to where we can even get back to our roots the way we used to do farming sustainably in the past mm -hmm. I think it, it will help us yeah it will help us so it's young people also learning from the older generation of how they used to do it even 15 years ago mm -hmm. we can learn a lot thank you so much yeah. for that Anything else, Dixon? Uh, yes, and 
thank you once again for, for coming all this way, mm -hmm. uh, coming to visit us. Uh, I believe you guys are doing a very good job as uh, uh, Miju Eco Care. Yes, uh, please keep up the good work. Uh, we are a keen follower uh, of your work and uh, we do encourage you to continue doing what you're doing because you are, believe it or not, uh, you're, you're making a huge difference because uh, the world need people like us to uh, look after the environment. Yes, because the future generation will definitely look back and uh, see how we've been doing things today and uh, what we will leave for them in the future. So what story are they going to tell? Are they going to uh, look back and, uh, you know, uh, see that uh, we destroyed everything and left them with nothing? Or will they praise us and say thank you very much for actually having us in mind uh, when you are developing the world? So uh, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your work and uh, please do keep it up. Thank you so much. So on that note, we are signing off. We would like to thank all the Miju Echo Care followers for the support they've given us this particular year. We know tomorrow is uh, Christmas, so we're saying Happy Christmas in advance. Take care and stay green. Bye. <laughs>